Major 7 chords have a great open yet really resolved sound and even though they sound pretty much at rest then you can still make some really great chord substitutions with them and use them in progressions to get some beautiful sounds. In this video I'm going to go over some different examples of how you can use major 7 chords as chord substitutions and I'm also going to talk about how if you change one note in the voicing then you open up for a lot more interesting things that you can easily add to your chord progressions and get some new sounds and some new variations on the chord progressions that you're already playing. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. I'm going to start with a few that are related to the key really sort of a modal interchange of borrowing from the parallel minor and then I'm gonna move into some more chromatic examples later in the video. This chord progression is in the key of C major and I'm using the flat 6, so the A flat major 7, as a chord substitute. Now, A flat major 7 is in fact diatonic to the key of C major because it's borrowed from minor. If you have a C minor scale, then that would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. And if we take the diatonic chords in that scale, then we have C minor 7, D half diminished, E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, a flat major 7 here on the 6th degree, and then a B flat 7. So this chord progression is in the key of C major, but we're borrowing a flat 6 from the relative minor. So this is a kind of modal interchange or borrowing from the minor key. In this example, I'm using the A flat major 7 instead of a 5 chord. So you could imagine that this progression originally was a 2, 5, 1 in the key of C major, and then I've substituted the G7 with an A flat major 7. You can also very often use it as a substitute for a two chord in a minor 2-5. So for instance, if you have Stella by Starlight, then instead of playing E half diminished A7, you could play B flat major 7 to A7, like this. The flat 6 major 7 chord also works really well as a substitution for the tonic chord. For instance, if you take the ending of There's No Greater Love, you would have something like this. So here, There's No Greater Love is of course in the key of B flat major, and the flat 6 in B flat major is a G flat major 7. So I'm just using that, the ending of the song is 5 of 5, and then to 5. And then instead of going to the 1 chord, I go to the flat 6 major 7, as a sort of suspension. Flat 2 major 7 chord is another minor subdominant chord in the key, and it's often referred to as the Neapolitan subdominant. In jazz, when you come across this, then it's going to be the major 7 chord a half step above the root. So in the case of C major, that means that the Neapolitan subdominant of the flat 2 major 7 is of course D flat major 7. It's pretty easy to see why the Neapolitan subdominant is in fact a minor subdominant in the key, because if we take the case of C major, then the Neapolitan subdominant is of course the D flat major 7, and that would be D flat, F, A flat, and C. And the upper part of this chord is in fact an F minor chord, so that's really just a 4 minor chord, so clearly this is related to a minor subdominant in the key. The way you want to see that is that it's really just an F minor chord with an extra leading note in the bass. In this case it's a D flat that's pulling us down to the C. Like the flat 6 major 7 that I just covered, then this chord is pretty flexible as a substitute, so you can use it in different places as a substitute for both tonic, dominant, and subdominant chords if it fits the melody. Since it is a minor subdominant chord, then the scale you would use for it is a C minor scale, but you need to alter this scale so that it fits the chord. And if we just take a look at that, then that would be a C minor scale would of course just be C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. And then we need to alter this to fit the chord. And the only thing we need to do here is just to take the D and turn that into a D flat. And then we have C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. That gives us a D flat major 7 with a sharp 11, or if you translate that into a modal name, a Lydian sound on this D flat major 7 chord. To demonstrate how this sounds, if you're using it as a substitute for a subdominant chord, then we can take the ending of My Shining Hour that sounds like this. And if I use the Neapolitan subdominant instead of the F minor, then we have... Thank you. 
and it also works really well as a substitute for a dominant sometimes. And you can hear that in this short excerpt from Solar. And a very common way to use this chord is as a suspension or substitution of the tonic at the end of a song. So in the case of Prelude to a Kiss, that sounds like this. These first examples were sort of part of the key and part of functional harmony and therefore they can be used in a lot of different places. The next ones are more sort of chromatic in nature and that means that it's a little bit more difficult to use them. You can't use them as much and you have to take a lot more care with the voice leading. But it also means that when you're using them then they sound a lot better because they're a little bit more surprising, a little bit more unexpected. This first example is really just using a chromatic approach, just a half step below the chord that we're targeting. So in this case, I'm using a B major to take me to the C major. And this is really a chromatic approach. There is a later example in this video where you can sort of relate a type of B major seven chord to an alter dominant, but in this case, it's not really a dominant. It's just a chromatic passing chord. And that's also how it's being voice led. So I'm really just resolving it to the C major seven, taking a little bit of care to be also a little bit surprising with that, but for the rest, it's just a surprising sound that sometimes it will fit with the melody and then you can use it. And for the rest, it's a little bit difficult to fit in there. The G flat major seven is another example of a chord that's also just, because it's a major seven chord, it just sounds at rest. And even though it's not really in the key, you can still voice lead it so that it resolves to the C major seven. And in this case, that's really just using the fact that the D flat moves up to the D and the B flat moves up to the B here, F is going down to E, and that way we have sort of very smooth transition back to C major seven. With the previous example, I was using this sound with the G flat major seven. So that's a G flat major seven with a sharp 11 or with a flat five, because we don't actually have a fifth in the chord. And that sound is really useful for chord substitutions. It's a little bit different from just the straight ahead major seven sound. So it's a little bit more open, a little bit more mysterious, but you can really use it for a lot of useful things and it's very easy to put into chord progressions. The name major seven flat five is not always recognized as a valid chord name. I think you'll find a lot of people who will insist that it's never a major seven flat five, it's always a major seven sharp 11. And there is something to be said for that in the example that I used the G flat major seven, it was clearly a sharp 11 and I went to the fifth later in that bar. But at the same time, there are also some places where we're using this to describe a four note chord. So calling it a sharp 11 is actually a little bit strange because that is a description of a six note chord. And another thing that's also very often causing problems with this is that in some cases where I'm using, in fact, both of the upcoming examples that I'm gonna go over in this video, then the major seven flat five that I'm talking about doesn't have a perfect fifth. So if I call it a sharp 11, then I would also have to describe that there is no perfect fifth. I would have to call it a sharp five, sharp 11. And that seems a little bit strange when I'm describing a four note chord. So I'm using major seven flat five and you're free to not agree with me and call it something else. And you can also leave all the angry comments that you want down in the comments. <laughs> Here I'm using a B major seven flat five and I'm using it instead of the dominant in a two five one. And in fact, this is just an alter dominant with another bass note, because if you relate the B major seven flat five to a G seven altered, then you have, this is the B major seven flat five. Then you have B the third, E flat, the flat 13 and F the flat seven and a B flat, that's the sharp nine. So in that way, we really just have this type of sound on the G7, but we have a B in the bass, and that's the only difference. This means that it's really easy to use this sound if you wanna use a substitute for an alter dominant, and that can be very practical in a lot of songs. Here I'm using the A flat major seven flat five, 
as a sort of variation on a backdoor dominant. So in the key of C major, B flat seven is the backdoor dominant. And that's also really what this chord works as. That's really what that sounds like. If I play the A flat major seven flat five in root position and then relate that to a B flat seven, then we have the flat seven, the nine, the third and the 13. So again, it's just really a B flat seven with some extensions and it works great as a variation on a backdoor dominant progression. I think it's really great that you can use reharmonization as a part of how you interpret pieces and you can really add your own colors. So if you wanna explore some more options and get some more concepts that you can use when you're reharmonizing a song, check out these videos where I'm going over some different approaches on a two five one and a turnaround and just giving you some different options that you can try out in your own arrangements and your own music.